Alrighty, let's get this video started. What do I have here? Another one. The DevNet Associate. Let's talk about it. And welcome back to the channel, the only channel that provides you with extremely cringy intros and a little bit of sarcasm. Uh, what we're gonna be talking about today is the DevNet Associate exam. Um, I took it at Cisco Live, and as you saw from the intro, I'm gonna awkwardly lean over and grab this. Uh, I did pass the exam, and uh, traditional for me for when I pass an exam, I like to do, uh, now I don't know what to do with it, but I'm gonna set it down over here. Um, what I like to do is record uh, a follow-up video giving a little bit of an idea of how the exam went. Uh, I am going to timestamp everything below to save you guys some time. Uh, so hopefully this video will be educational and will help you pass the exam. Uh, so what I'd like to start off with is the materials I used. Again, everything will be timestamped below. So if you want to skip the boring part and get to my thoughts, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, my first example of uh, what I used uh, I'd like to say um, not everything I used uh, was 100% helpful. Um, I will talk about some of the things that I used that I uh, wished I didn't. Hopefully that uh, won't keep jumping like that. But uh, anyway, so um, not everything I used was useful. Um, some things that I used, uh, it looks like my camera's still jumping. I apologize, but uh, not everything I used was helpful. Um, some things I used were really helpful and I will try and touch on the things that I used, uh, that were really helpful and not everything is ordered. Uh, I don't want you to think that, uh, everything that I put, uh, in this, uh, I, I numbered it number one, two, three, four, whatever I numbered it. Uh, that doesn't mean that is the order I recommend you do things. That is just the order of slides that I put together. A first resource that I always like to use is the official cert guides. Um, the official cert guide is definitely uh, a great place to start, especially if you read the index of the book. So you can see the blueprint, you can see how the book is laid out and you can kind of get a feel for the exam. Now the official cert guide, I felt like uh, in some areas, Areas, um, was a little challenging to get through. Not to say that the book wasn't good, um, but to say there certainly was a few areas that I felt like was extremely difficult to get through, um, particularly the Cisco specifics uh, sections. Uh, I felt like it was extremely challenging uh, to get through, at least for me. Um, I've read a lot of Cisco books, as most of you know, I have quite the extensive library. Um, it's definitely not one of my favorite books, but I would recommend it as usual as a good starting place uh, to get you started. Maybe read through the book one time and then come back to it and skim through it uh, at a later date. The second resource I used was Pluralsight. Um, now this is kind of a two part. This will also be my uh, fourth thing that I used and that will make sense here in just a moment. Uh, but Pluralsight, uh, Nick Russo's course, extremely extremely well put together as usual. Uh, I always say great things about Nicholas Russo's courses because he produces it in such a way that it's really easy to understand, but it's also no BS, so you get straight to the point. Uh, and I think the way he lays out his plans is really useful, especially because we don't have a lot of time to study it. Most people that are studying for this exam probably already has a full-time job. You've got everything else on the side, so you don't wanna spend a lot of time joking around and nonsense, basically. Uh, so his content on Pluralsight, uh, videos are well put together, it's straight to the point, and it's technical enough to help you uh, pass this exam. My third uh, thing that I used was the developer.cisco.com. Uh, this website is probably uh, where you'll spend a lot of time studying for the exam uh, with the developer uh, content on there for the code repositories, the sandboxes, the labs. Uh, I spent a tremendous amount of time on the developer site. Uh, Hank Preston's videos on there are 10 out of 10. Uh, I would actually say um, his videos probably, if I had to start over, would probably be my starting point. Um, and then the book, uh, because I feel like his videos are a good bridge, uh, pun intended for Cisco language, but it's a good bridge to kind of get you started and, uh, and help you understand uh, the depth of the exam and then read the book. Uh, and I think that was, uh, would be a great strategy uh, if I had to do it again. Um, but his videos on there, of course, again, the labs, the sandboxes. Now, I did end up purchasing 
uh, from Cisco some training material for this exam. Uh, but uh, if I had to go back over, I wouldn't have done that. And I'll get into that here a little bit later on into the video. Uh, but the free content on Cisco's developer website, uh, a tremendous help uh, in passing this exam. Yeah, so hopefully that's fixed. Um, I apologize about that. Uh, the camera was losing focus a lot and I could see it out of the corner of my eye. Uh, so hopefully that's good to go. Uh, so anyway, we'll get into more uh, of what I just talked about uh, on the Cisco content, the thing that I paid for. Um, we'll get into that here in just a moment. Um, the fourth thing that I ended up using, and this kind of ties in with the second uh, Pluralsight course, was Nicholas Russo's content, uh, his Excel spreadsheet to be specific. And <laughs> I had to put his face in this video. And if Nick ends up saying this, uh, this is definitely your glamour shot. So I put this in here. Um, to, to make it known that your content was extremely helpful and I greatly appreciate that. And uh, I'm going to link all of this down below, but of course, check out his channel. Uh, that will be linked below and check out his uh, content on Pluralsight and of course the Excel spreadsheet. Extremely well put together. I actually watched his video series all the way through first time without using the sheet. Uh, and then I ended up going back and downloading the sheet, going through the sheet and then watching the content all the way through. Uh, and then at the end of the sheet, he has you watch it again. So I actually uh, spent a lot of time with his videos and I greatly appreciate uh, the way everything was laid out uh, or was laid out. Um, the, especially the model view controller portions, I felt like was uh, explained better than most of the uh, video content out there. Uh, so I would definitely check out his Excel spreadsheet and pair that with your plural site. And it's a win-win situation. And the last thing, really, this is an honorary mention is the YouTube content. Um, I'm not going to link any specifics. I would say, um, YouTube. Um, certainly has a ton of content out there for uh, developers and network engineers alike, and you can use those to find videos on your weaknesses. Uh, and this is the part of the video that's going to kind of segue into my personal opinion on the exam uh, and things that I wish I had done. Uh, so YouTube is definitely an honorary mention. And how I use YouTube was uh, once I made my way through the content that I have previously mentioned, there were a few areas that I felt like I was a little... Uh, lapsed in. So I ended up using YouTube uh, to find more specific content on the areas that I struggled in. Um, maybe uh, just as an example, like Yang models uh, and you are, are Yang data models and you wanted to learn more about them, uh, then go to YouTube and just search up content on that and kind of dive further into that topic and then revisit it later on. Um, I also did a mixture of quizzes. I did Boson. Um, if you've followed my channel for a while, you know I'm a big fan of Boson. I ended up purchasing uh, the Boson practice exams and only ended up doing two. Um, I didn't spend a lot of time doing the Boson exams because I have a little bit, uh, or when I say a little bit, I've been doing uh, network automation for a few years. Uh, so I had quite the extensive background. And so I don't really feel like the uh, Boson content aided me in passing the exam, uh, but I did end up using it uh, um, for two practice exams and uh, kind of gauging. And then uh, I actually got really fortunate because uh, I was going to Cisco Live. So I had uh, a free exam voucher going to Cisco Live, but I also had a, uh, a voucher that was sent from Cisco to use the uh, practice exams from them. And I would say that was also extremely helpful. I would say it was actually probably better laid out than the Boson exam. And it was actually closer to what the exam felt like uh, maybe just a little easier. All in all, uh, I took the exam at Cisco Live. I'd recommend if you are going to Cisco Live and you are going to take the exam, uh, at least at the time of this recording, this past uh, 2023 Cisco Live, um, they had earbuds, uh, or, or, uh, which would typically be used for ear protection to dampen sound. Um, they had those and I didn't take it because when I went in the room, it was extremely quiet. Uh, but then as I started the exam, there must have been a session adjacent to my room and uh, there was a lot of clapping. There was a lot of noise. So I would definitely highly recommend that if you go in the room and it's quiet, don't let it deceive you. Go ahead and grab those just in case. Uh, it was very distracting. I'm usually not a person that struggles uh, to concentrate uh, during an exam, uh, but 
this was very distracting and uh, I know it was a Cisco live so that's kind of my own fault for assuming that the room was going to stay quiet the entire time uh, maybe that's a uh, a once in a while uh, scenario that happens uh, but I would highly recommend grabbing those uh, ear protectors throwing those in or at least having them with you at your uh, station just in case let's get into the exam itself uh, it was I'd say it was fair um, now I'm hesitant to say that uh, only because I felt like having my CCMP um, didn't help me and I know that's gonna sound a little odd um, but there were a few questions that I felt like if I was starting over and I was either a developer branching into network engineering or a network engineer just you know fresh off the CCNA maybe going into the DevNet now that's not to say that you need a CCNA to get the DevNet uh, but what I mean by that is uh, there were a few questions that I overthought uh, particularly the networking questions um, the way they were worded and the way that they laid out the uh, the, the actual answers to the uh, question um, was really, really good, except for a few questions. I would say there was a handful of questions um, that they asked that the answer was not so obvious, um, at least the answer they were looking for. Um, I wish I could really think of an example. I had one, um, but the more I thought about it, I was like, that's kind of it, it probably wouldn't be good for the uh, the NDA so I'm not going to give an example but I would say um, my first advice if you're someone who has a CCMP CCIE CCNA whatever whatever you are when it comes to the networking questions don't overthink it um, for the developer questions as far as the uh, the Python scripting and, and all of that other stuff that was on the exam um, I definitely uh, did not overthink those, uh, but when it came to the networking portion, for some reason, I just got questions that um, uh, that made me really, really overthink the question. And it, if I had not had done that, uh, I felt like uh, I would I would probably think the exam was more fair, um, and that's probably just my mistake. Uh, so I would really recommend. Uh, again, for the people that have uh, any previous certification in networking, when you get to the networking questions, don't overthink it uh, because you probably may end up uh, choosing an answer that they're not looking for. Now, in my particular case, um, I would say the rest of the exam was fairly laid out. Um, there were a few questions uh, that I definitely got to that stumped me that I don't feel like was in any, in any of the content that I had uh, previously studied for. Um, so if you come across a question like that, uh, I would just use a typical uh, rule out scenario where you can find the very obvious uh, wrong answers, uh, especially when it comes to the programming questions. Uh, look for syntax errors or anything that is really obvious to help you rule it out. Um, there were a, quite a few uh, questions that they had. Uh, uh, it was an API question, but it had uh, a little API helper uh, that kind of give you a little bit of information. Uh, look for the obvious mistakes in that, and I think you will fare well with most of the uh, scripting questions or any question for that matter. If you use the uh, rule out strategy where you rule out the obviously wrong answers and then break it down, usually you'll end up with 50-50, and then you can uh, you can make an educated decision, hopefully, uh, with your final choices. Um, that's really it. I don't really have much more to add uh, in terms of how the exam went for me. Um, or how uh, I, I wish the exam was different. I really think the exam was fair uh, in most cases. Uh, I would say just look out for those unique scenarios that I gave uh, for some of those trigger examples. Um, you, you definitely want to take your time. Now, I finished extremely fast. This is probably the fastest that I had finished an exam. Uh, I was at Cisco Live, so I had some sessions coming right after my exam. So I would say I blew through the exam a lot faster than I normally would have. Uh, and that was definitely a mistake. Even though I passed the exam, there were uh, some areas that I, after I got through that I looked at, they don't give you a score, but they give you a, a, a good exam, or they give you a representation in the areas that you did. Uh, they give you a percentage. And honestly, uh, it's funny enough, I think I scored the least amount in the networking section. And uh, that's hilarious to me having my CCMP. But again, I think I blew through a lot of those questions because I was like, oh, I've got my CCMP, this is easy. Uh, and so I blew through a lot of questions. 
um, that I, I definitely should have spent more time. I think I, I think I had like an hour and 10 minutes left, um, which was, uh, that was a really quick exam. It was, uh, it was way quicker than it should have been, but I did pass. And then, so I guess that's all that matters. So anyway, um, I'm going to put on the screen here again, everything that I didn't end up using for the exam. Uh, be sure to check the description, uh, for all the links that it will link you to the content that I used as well as timestamps. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, or you're just skimming through, I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. As always, thank you so much for your time and for watching, and hopefully this video was helpful.